Welcome back everyone, this is going to be my new Marple Moon Knight Midnight Suns video. Recently there was another easter egg for the Midnight Suns characters that'll be crossing over during Marvel Phase 4 with the upcoming series and movies. Moon Knight, Kit Harington's Black Knight, Blade, Werewolf by Night, supernatural characters like Ghost Rider. There was also another Ghost Rider easter egg during Moon Knight Episode 1. So we'll explain who the Midnight Suns are and what all these easter eggs have been so far and what's coming up. If you're new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the Moon Knight episodes. We're doing a Disney Plus giveaway for memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your predictions on the video. Sure you're ready for that, Mr. Whitman? So recently I've been talking about some of the upcoming crossovers in the MCU. There's a lot of different types of crossovers that the different projects are teasing just relative to what each movie or series are and what kind of character they are. Even though this is mostly a Midnight Suns video, there are projects that we've seen recently that have set up Avengers 5 and the other teams in the MCU like Young Avengers. But if you include the Eternals post credit scene, there have been at least four or five Midnight Suns crossovers that we've either seen or know about that will be happening soon. Blink and you'll miss it, a couple have already happened during the Moon Knight episodes that we've seen so far and a couple more will happen in the future episodes. The Midnight Suns are one of Marvel's darkest anti-hero team-ups, whereas most attention in the MCU has been given to the next Avengers team in Avengers 5, which are more or less straight up heroes, a little more above board. I mean, nobody's perfect, but for instance, they have the Hulk on the team. He's done a lot of really bad stuff. It's gotten him in a lot of trouble. But at any given time, the people who are on the Midnight Suns team typically view their powers more like curses that each of them have to bear, as opposed to something really cool that they're happy to have. Iron Man was a good example of this on the Avengers. He wasn't inevitably going to succumb to the curse of his arc reactor and fall into a deep bloodlust trying to kill everyone around him. Like, he'd actually legit removed all the shrapnel from his chest by Iron Man 3. During Avengers Infinity War, he had put the arc reactor back on, mostly symbolically, in case something bad was going to happen. So there was no threat from shrapnel or any kind of supernatural curse on him at that point. His arc reactors didn't trap the souls of the people that he killed. He's not going to eventually be forced to drink human blood from wearing it, turning into a full-blown vampire. <laughs> All the anti-heroes that become part of Midnight Sun's powers are tied to occult sources for the most part. The roster changes over time just like the Avengers roster, but you have to start somewhere. There has to be a first team. So it all started during the Eternals post credit scene when Kit Harington's Dane Whitman brought out the ebony blade from his uncle's castle here that he's standing in and was getting ready to accept his destiny as the next Black Knight in their family line. There's a lot of clues and hints during the movie, but if it wasn't clear, his uncle that Cersei spoke of was the previous Black Knight. The whole reason in the movie that she wanted him to make up with him before bad things happened, before the emergence happened and the celestial team it was going to destroy Earth was because when Dane Whitman was younger, his uncle had already begun to succumb to the curse of the blade. The more people you kill with it, the more souls it traps and the more you're filled with an uncontrollable berserker bloodlust. Eventually you wind up turning on everyone around you trying to kill them too. So it'd be like Dane Whitman trying to kill all the other Avengers characters. That's why he's so hesitant to take out the ebony blade and says, I have to try, I have to try as he gets ready to touch it and actually accept its power. And it's why in that post credit scene, it's Mahershala Ali's blade character in his first MCU appearance, asking him if he's ready for this. Like, are you sure you're ready to accept the curse of this blade? The next big Easter egg was recently during the Moon Knight episodes. Moon Knight himself is also part of this MCU Midnight Suns crossover. His powers come from a supernatural God tier source like Khonshu. During the episodes, his case file read number 1975, that's a reference to Werewolf by Night, number 32, Moon Knight's first appearance in the comics, and they're going to use the Moon Knight episodes to set up the next Midnight Suns character, Werewolf by Night, aka Jack Russell. You've probably been seeing a bunch of Werewolf by Night Easter eggs popping up in the episodes and during the teasers that they've released so far, like there was a promo where he's sitting right next to Werewolf by Night number 32, referencing both his first appearance and the appearance of Werewolf by Night himself during the Moon Knight episodes. Werewolf is going to be getting a Halloween special that Marvel's making for later this year, so my early theory is that they'll have a moment at the end of the Moon Knight episodes, like a post credit scene or something similar to that, just teasing his character. Ethan Hawke's Arthur Harrow character explains that he was the previous avatar of Khonshu, but he's not anymore. He said that part of the reason for him breaking his bargain with Khonshu, no longer wanting to be the avatar, was because he was trying to tell Stephen Grant that Khonshu was a liar, that there would always be one last mission before he let his body go. Trust me when I tell you, Khonshu is a liar. There's always one last thing. Meaning he would never let his body go. 
My early theory right now, just based on the way they were teasing that, is that Werewolf by Night will be the quote-unquote next mission that Khonshu gives him after they defeat Arthur Harrow in Amit. Also, during Moon Knight Episode 2, there's another Werewolf by Night reference when he's transforming between Mr. Knight and Moon Knight at the bus. During their fight on the bus, you can actually read it says WBN number 0032, another Easter egg for Werewolf by Night 32, the Moon Knight crossover debut where they fought each other, then eventually became allies. Like in that Werewolf by Night story where he debuted, initially he had been sent to kill Werewolf by Night. It sounds like Kanchu is going to give him a similar type of mission. Like, oh, there's another mission. You need to go kill this supernatural creature that's a big threat. But then they'll probably become friends and eventually team up with the other Midnight Suns type of characters. So there will be more Werewolf by Night references during future episodes. Then during that actual Werewolf by Night Halloween special later this year, the next Midnight Suns crossover is supposed to be Mahershala Ali's Blade character actually legit showing up on screen. Not just his voice, like you'll see his body, you'll see him as Blade. We don't know exactly what's going to be happening during that episode other than them just telling more of Werewolf by Night's actual backstory, but it sounds like in the MCU, Blade has taken it upon himself to clean up a lot of the broader supernatural messes, not just vampire-related problems. During all the Wesley Snipes Blade movies, his version mostly fought different groups of vampires. That's why initially when they teased the Black Knight Blade crossover, everyone was talking about Black Knight Vampire Hunter and MCU Dracula. Dracula is a Marvel character. He shows up in all the Moon Knight memes too. Just another connection to all these different characters teaming up. Then we're getting ready to watch Doctor Strange 2. Doctor Strange is also a Midnight Suns character. He's part of a lot of these supernatural team ups. He helps lead a lot of them too because he has so many responsibilities. He's even part of the classic version of the Defenders, which we saw the Netflix Defenders, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist. The Defenders that I'm talking about are a completely different type of team though. The reason why he's so tied to the Midnight Suns is because he has supernatural powers just like they do and most of their problems are supernatural related. This is sort of his arena of responsibility in the MCU. If it's supernatural related, just call Doctor Strange. How did you do that? Lots of birthday parties. We're getting ready to watch Doctor Strange 2. I just did another Doctor Strange 2 trailer for the new one, so I'll link that in the description below. The movie's gonna be crazy, but part of the idea is that since coming back from the blip in Avengers Endgame, along with the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange is learning about all these other greater threats from the multiverse and his greater responsibility to protect the main MCU dimension and just reality in general, protect the sanctity of reality. Also, we're going to see the multiverse Illuminati with Patrick Stewart's Professor X variant in the movie. The Illuminati don't all have supernatural powers, but just like the Midnight Suns, they're another example of a darker type of Marvel team up. Their team typically makes the harder choices, causing them to do shadier things in the name of the greater good. Like we're trying to protect reality, so we might wind up causing some collateral damage, but it's all in the name of the greater good. Then there's that brand new MCU Blade movie with Mahershala Ali coming next year. They haven't completely revealed all the villains that are going to be in that movie, but based on all the Midnight Suns crossovers they've been teasing recently, it looks like most of those characters will cross over in the Blade movie in some way. Presumably after that, they'll have more adventures together teaming up in Marvel Phase 5 in movies and series, however Marvel decides to do that. MCU Ghost Rider is just the next major character. Kevin Feige has only mentioned him briefly in passing the past couple of years, so he's like the biggest question mark as to how they'd reference him next. The real quick Ghost Rider Easter egg, blink and you'll miss it, in Moon Knight Episode 1 happens when Stephen Grant is trying to hide in the elevator from Kanchu, who's coming to force him to switch back to Mark Spector. Inside the elevator, if you look, zoom and enhance, there's a symbol of a flaming Ghost Rider skull. Nicolas Cage has said that he doesn't expect them to bring him back soon, but we'll eventually see more Easter eggs for Ghost Rider in different supernatural related projects. So post all your theories in the comments about who should play MCU Ghost Rider. And remember, before Kevin Feige took over all of Marvel television a couple years ago, Jeff Loeb and the TV people were getting ready to literally roll camera like a couple weeks before they were rolling camera on a Ghost Rider series for Hulu as part of a bigger Defenders Hearts of Darkness type of team up and they were planning on featuring Gabriel Luna's Robbie Ray as Ghost Rider from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Kevin Feige canceled that before they started rolling camera mostly because he had his own plans for the characters with the new Marvel Studios Disney Plus projects and he didn't want them spending money on this other Ghost Rider project right as that was getting started. Talk about Kang the Conqueror Easter eggs too. Midnight Suns, like I said, are kind of like the Young Avengers in the MCU right now. They're an example of another different type of team up that is not the next Avengers. Like all these different Marvel series are introducing new characters that we've never seen before and they're supposed to cross over in the movies and participate in big team ups, but not all of them are just feeding into Avengers 5.
Some of them will be in Avengers 5, but not all of them. Good example of that is Moon Knight. Oscar Isaac has teased that he'll be crossing over with Avengers 5, but also separately, he'll also be doing more supernatural team-ups like Midnight Suns. Marvel might wind up calling it something different, but we say Midnight Suns because that's basically what it is. So post all your theories in the comments. Who do you want this supernatural team to fight in the MCU? In my full Moon Knight Episode 3 video, we'll post next week just like normal, and we're going to get that Thor Love and Thunder trailer really soon. Everyone click here for my brand new Thor Love and Thunder video, and click here for my full Moon Knight Episode 3 trailer video in Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.